Hi there folks, Toby Pittman here for motionworks.net and we're back here with another modelling tutorial in Cinema 4D. Now the topic of this video is retopology and how you use retopology to resolve complex shapes. And these are generally shapes you can't get very easily by merging primitive objects together as their topology doesn't match up and this is really not ideal for getting smooth bevels when you're subdividing. So this is a very handy technique to know. And we're going to be looking at how we can use Boolean shapes as a starting point or a guide mesh to create a cleaner mesh to work with using retopology. So I have this model here and this is a sci-fi repair tool. This is based on a concept by Chris Fowler from Armory Studios. They do a lot of really cool concepting work for games. And if we scroll down here, we can see this design here. And you can check out Armory Studios at their website. They do a lot of cool work. And there's some great 3D modeling being done here. So what I did is I bought this reference image into Cinema and basically worked over the top of this to create my model, just tracing out various surfaces and you can see the results side by side here i've still got a couple of bits to add on to this but i think this will serve as a good example for now now one thing to kind of note is that this model is made up of a lot of separate parts and i have two nulls here one has the unsubdivided pieces in it i hide the subdivision you can see that these are very simple little shapes that are made basically from you know primitive objects this was a uh, oil tank and these are just bits that don't really need to be subdivided because obviously they're very easy to make using primitives in cinema i then obviously have this folder uh, that has my subdivided parts in we uh, turn off the subdivision and let's have a look at this mesh you can see that this is actually how the piece is modelled. So I'm going to select this main body part here and just solo this. And this is the part that we're going to have a look at. And I'm just going to show you how you can kind of get started with a shape like this. Now the section we're going to look at is where this curved object here intersects with this round object here and these kind of intersections are notoriously tricky to model because a regular say um, capsule the round end of it just doesn't have the right topology to get these two pieces to join up and this will become apparent when we start to make our boolean guide object that we're going to model over couple of other areas to note here is that I have some um, edges here that I've used for sharpening and creating this detail here and these edges are coming down this area here now instead of propagating these edges into the rest of my mesh which is fairly unnecessary I can actually just loop these kind of edges back on themselves using um, some little edge loops here if you're familiar with making it look great 11, which you'll find on motion works, these are the kind of techniques that we go through um, and obviously many, many other things. And if you want to get into modeling, you know, this is where you're going to find the information for these techniques in cinema. So the main purpose of this video is how you can create these transitional edges here that are very clean using retopology um, which would otherwise be impossible by just trying to merge primitive shapes. So let's dive in and see how we do this. So the first thing we're going to do is to build our proxy object that we're going to retopologize. So I have this kind of a capsule shape here. So let's make a capsule. Run this along Z. Let's change the radius. Uh, 
and move this into position. So that is step one. I probably also want to give this some more segments. Uh, we're going to shrink wrap onto this, so I want as much surface detail as I can possibly get. So I'm going to raise this up pretty high. It's going to have nothing to do with our end result, but um, I just want a nice surface to latch onto. Now I'm going to make a cube. So the point of this cube is just to give me a starting area for this detail. Now, because I don't have an orthographic view of the actual um, width of this in any of the reference, I'm going to have to kind of eyeball this. So we just come in and move this in. I'd say that's uh, about right, maybe. And if we look at our reference we also have a bevel running along this top edge so i want to put that in as well so i'm going to make this editable go into edge mode get my bevel tool bevel out this like so so this is my rough block out as far as surface reference goes so I'm going to actually ball these two pieces together now. So first I'm going to create just a safety copy in case I need to go back. Just make my capsule into an editable object. Holding option or alt, I just put my capsule in, put my cube in. Obviously, this is the wrong mode. I want to union these. And you can see the hell that the Boolean has created uh, with all these polygons onto a single polygon surface. We're getting these uh, horrible edges. Now, if you're going to double ball something, you need to get rid of these edges. Otherwise, this is going to wreak havoc uh, with your next Boolean operation. So you need to hide these edges, which basically turns this surface into a giant end gone. Now, obviously, because it's a reference object, we're not worried about engons or any type of topology. So this is cool. Create single object. And then I'm going to hit C to turn this into an editable object. And now I have this which is obviously a horrible mess. So now we're going to create this detail here. That's the main ball detail. Now the reason I've already balled these together is so I can see the edge where this spherical shape meets the flat plane. And I need this to get a reference for where I want to line some points up. So I'm going to create a cylinder. Put this along the X. Let's go to object mode. And let's kind of move this into position. Let's make this smaller. Zoom in. So this looks about right. Now, here's where you can obviously see the problem of joining two primitive shapes together is you're never ever going to get these edges to line up. The edges going around the cylinder will never line up with the edges that are on the surface of this capsule. And try as you might changing the edge count, this will never work which is why we have to use retopology to get these two shapes to fuse together perfectly. Now, the only points I want to line up are on the intersection of the capsule and the cylinder along this edge. And I want that to happen here, and I want it to happen here. So ideally, I want a point on both of these positions. 
So if I go to my cylinder, I'm just going to mess with the edge count to kind of try and get these to line up. And you can see this is actually pretty tricky, but 21, I think is going to do it. I'm just going to cheat a little bit. Kind of move this into position by kind of scaling and moving this until I get a point that's relatively near here and relatively near here. You can see this one's bang on the money. Um, so this is going to do me, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten polygons along here. This should be all right. So I'm going to go with this. I'm just going to uh, shrink this down a little bit. It doesn't need to be that long. So now I'm going to make this detail here. I'm going to do that by copying my cylinder. Now in this area, I'm actually going to join these two up, but I don't really want this much geometry here as all of these edges are going to propagate out into this mesh. So I could probably do with reducing that a little bit. Although I still want enough geometry um, that's going to support the curve. And 16 sides ought to do that pretty well. Now these shapes are obviously lined up perfectly as they're copies. I'm going to make safety copies of them convert these to editable objects and connect them together. Come into polygon mode, grab my selection tool, take off visible elements only. Now on this side I want to keep a semicircle, so I basically want to delete half of this and on this shape I want one polygon kind of coming out on the edge here. So let's kind of delete all this. And now we can join these two shapes together. Let's hide this. It's going to optimize edge mode, grab my loop tool, boundary loop. Let's grab this and this. Stitch and sew. Let's hit shift and stitch these together. Now, ideally, I'd like a straight line here. You can see this is a little bit wonky. So what I could do is just actually dissolve this. So shift D, that's my key command for dissolve. Now I get a straight edge. And now I'm actually going to recut a loop into here. Which again gives me that polygon that I was after before. Let's just move this in a little bit. It looks like this edge here could just do with coming out a little bit, maybe. Okay, I think that's all right. So now we can ball these shapes together. So option or alt on our original shape. Let's drop our cylinder into here. And we want A subtract B, which we have. Let's move our cylinder inwards. And we can see this start to chop out our shape. And there we have it. Now, obviously, you can see uh, where these two shapes are meeting. We are getting all sorts of horrible geometry, um, which is exactly the reason we're using retopology. 
and I'll show you why that is in a minute. I'm going to again make a, just a safety copy. Come into my ball, create single object, hide all the new edges, and then break this down into a shape. And there we have it. Now, the reason that this topology is so awful is because if you were to try and bevel this edge, I'm just going to select this path of edges. Now, I'm actually dragging here, but Cinema doesn't quite know what to do with that. It's so rubbish. Now, if I try to bevel this, you can see immediately what happens. It's just going to give you a terrible result. Your mesh is going to break. And you're going to get this kind of result. You're never going to be able to get a clean bevel out of topology like this. You're banging your head on a wall. So let's retop this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to steal some of this geometry back. So I'm going to grab my loop tool. I'm going to grab this and this. UP to split and turn this into a piece of geometry. Let's hide this. Now, the reason I've done this is because this is salvageable. You can see all the end on lines we have here, and this is caused by stray points caused by the end on lines. But we can clean these up really easily. We go to modeling, mesh check. Uh, we're after this thing called edge points here, and these are stray points connected to end on lines. If I say select and delete, you can see this cleans up this topology perfectly. Apart from um, a few points that need to be welded, uh, so we could just quickly weld these together. And we can turn off our mesh checker. Now, the beauty of this piece of topology is that the Boolean has created this perfect curve for us where these two shapes meet. And doing this manually by hand would be a bit of a pain. And you're always looking for shortcuts. And this is obviously, in our case, become a very good shortcut to getting this shape perfectly in line with our capture end. So now I want to shrink wrap my new topology on to my proxy object. So I'm going to hit shift, shrink wrap, and drag my bool in. So what I want to do is basically create an edge loop, a perfect edge loop around this shape, which will allow us to bevel it perfectly or sharpen it perfectly under subdivision. Now there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could grab the pen tool and pull these, you know, polygons out manually like this. And you'll notice that um, because I'm shrink wrapped, they are perfectly forming around this proxy shape. That, however, is a bit of a long-winded way of doing it. What I'm going to do is undo my shrink wrap or just turn it off. Select this edge loop and it's perfect because we have perfect edge flow along it. Very easy to uh, select. Going to go to my extrude tool. I have this set to minus 90 at the moment, but I'll... Uh, Put this back to zero and I can um, extrude out and then I can hit shift to constrain this to minus 90. That's kind of giving us our edge loop. If I put shrink wrap back on, 
you can see this hugs very nicely to our surface and it's just taken all the work out of it. Um, go to my move tool to point mode. Let's move. Let's move this point up to our edge here. And let's take this point and move this up to here. Now, hopefully, this should, um, you know, hug the shrink wrap, and that's all good. Now, you can see that when I go back to my pen tool, this isn't exactly working as I th thought it would be. And this is a little kind of a little kind of glitch with the pen tool, I guess. When you're working with some tools, the shrink wrap doesn't actually apply. Um, I think the knife tool is one of them. So I just have to shift those points back uh, like so. So now I have this perfect edge loop running around this. I have a perfect edge loop here. This means that when you try and bevel this edge, it means you're going to get a perfect bevel uh, happening around this shape. Now I probably want to um, push up my fong angle and you can see that this is working all bar. some fong issues but uh, we are getting a perfect bevel here anyway that's beside the point so what I now want to do is try and use the same concept of running perfect edge loops along these transitional edges I want one here and I want one running along here now along here should be pretty simple to do I do, however, have to consider what's going on in my mesh. This part here is obviously a separate part, and I've modeled this on the original, so this part is slotting in to this piece. So I essentially want to build a hole in this area. Um, so it looks like this piece is slotting inside it. So we need to take care of that. We also would need to take care of the fact that there is actually a, like a extrusion in here. So let's start there. So it doesn't really matter what mode I'm in with the pen tool. This is always going to stick because we are effectively shrink wrapped. So let's get this, this, and this, and let's extrude this out. And move this to here. Let's see how that's worked out. That's pretty good. Get my pen tool. Now then, we're also going to have to do this area here, and I want to make sure I have another edge coming here so I can extrude out like this. So this will give me an edge flow running this way up here and I also get an edge running up here and let's just fill this area in I'm not going to model this section we're just looking at the intersections on this shape so I'm actually going to start running this 
some edges along here. Now, because this is a curve, I kind of want to make sure I keep these fairly evenly spaced. And I'm going to stop when I get to here. And that should do us. So now I need to think of the edges running around this surface here. So I'm actually going to do that right now. Again, I'm trying to keep this kind of as even as I possibly can going up here. I'm not going to go all the way around because I want to see uh, how my edge count's working out in this middle section here. But I am going to try and straighten this edge up. Oh, that's not good. So that should work. So let's look at this area now. I tell you what, I'm going to get this ball and I'm going to put this into x-ray mode. Just so um, we don't have to look at the other edges. So I've got this edge loop running up here. And we can see this if we uh, select this row of polygons. And we also have another edge loop running around here which is very good. This is what we want. Now you'll see here we have this uh, kind of section where the edges actually start to split off and this is where we want to insert a diamond into here. Now this shape, the diamond where we have these intersections allows you to keep your polygons very equally consistent in size. So anywhere where you start to see a polygon becoming too large like this, you may want to consider splitting the uh, geometry off with a diamond. Now, this kind of retop scenario, it's all about practice. You just have to kind of keep getting better at doing it. Now, I have another situation here where I may actually want to do this kind of situation twice. So you can see I've got um, two of these situations here, and that's all right. Let's keep moving this along. I'm actually going to uh, smooth out this geometry in a bit, so I'm not really worried at the moment about how even all this is. So this is just more about trying to uh,
get these edge counts to match up. And this is basically why I didn't go round the whole thing. I also now have to think that I have a uh, concave detail here. I need to uh, make sure I have two edges attached to this point. If you've watched making it look great, uh, you'll know exactly what's going on there. As all this is explained. Uh, this has to do with uh, sharpening these edges, but I need this kind of topology on an angle that goes like this and not the other way so I can sharpen it. And obviously I need another one of these like so. I might take the fong tag down on this so I can actually see what I'm doing. And this polygon wants to go about halfway in. This we could symmetry this. So it's all kind of about, you know, just filling in space, really. Now, have I got myself into trouble here? Like I say, this takes uh, sort of practice. I kind of know how to fill this stuff in, but that's just the way it is. Get away with another poly here, another one here, and another here, and that should do it. Let's grab this edge, let's scale this to zero, make sure this is on world zero. So that's kind of not bad, it's a little bit uneven in places but I can sort that out in a minute. Let's make sure again this edge The scale to zero. Now, as far as the spacing of all this goes, we are going to need to think of a few things. We have a obviously a cylinder shape coming off of all this. So we're going to need these edges to be equally spaced if we want to get a perfect cylinder. Now, um, you could do this by lining it up to another cylinder or lining up all these points. Uh, you know, at this at point in time, there's going to be a little bit of manual reshuffling going around. Uh, it's kind of fairly unavoidable. Uh, the best way to do this is to get HB modeling tools as when it comes to getting into this much detail with a mesh you're going to need some of these tools to help you out one of these tools is the even distribution and what I'm going to do here is run that on this edge and what it's going to do is make all of those edges the same length so that when you extrude out you get a perfect cylinder. 
uh, and that is worth the money alone. Now you can see things have gone a little wonky here, but we can definitely fix this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all the internal points on this topology. Like so. I'm going to go to Mesh Transform Tools Brush in Smooth Mode. I've um, got a linear fall off strength about 143. And let me just make sure I've got all these points done. If I click down on this, you can see that the Smooth Brush is actually relaxing this mesh. Uh, which is really cool. This will um, relax the subdivision as well. It's trying to get everything equal of equal tension. Now sometimes we might have to go to like smear Take the um, strength down a little bit and we can uh, decrease our brush size. And just jig stuff about as we want it. We're still under shrink wrap here, so this is still going to work. Just kind of trying to make this uh, surface as even as we can. And if we look at this with just the fong shading on, you can see we've done a pretty good job of recreating this capsule shape. So let's just finish off the last little bit of this. I'm going to take uh, my ball and shrink wrap do a current state to object which effectively collapses the mesh down with the shrink wrap on. I'm just going to call this safe D shrink wrap put it into spares now let's just create um, the geometry that ran along here. Make sure this is world zero. And now what I can do is come in here, grab these edges and this edge and just copy these in. And that's how I get the recess. Like so. Now, interestingly, when I go to build this part that slots in, what I'll basically do there is essentially, you know, borrow to remember to uh, turn only visible elements back off. Uh, I'll split this off, UP. into a new piece of geometry. Select all the polygons. I'm going to reverse the normals on that. Go to my normal scale tool and bring this in a little bit. Get rid of these edges. 
And now I have my next piece of geometry or my next piece in the puzzle ready to go. And it pretty much matches up perfectly with the piece of geometry that came before it. So this would eventually turn in uh, to this section here. A uh, great way of like moving from part to part. Once you've modelled one, you borrow geometry from the other part. Um, so they link up together. So what happens when we sharpen this stuff? Well, let's just connect. this together let's just make a bit more of a surface that we can use like so let's uh, just for fun just extend this out a little bit so you can kind of get a feel for this make sure all our polys are facing the right way and they are so let's now subdivide this mesh and I'll show you just how easy it all becomes when you have these edge flows or these edge loops running along all of your transitional edges here around here you know around here It just makes everything much more easy. Now we can see these transitional edges if we go to Fong Break Selection and Select All. These are the edges that we essentially want to sharpen. Let's drop this into a subdivision. And you can see we have a, a few issues here. And that's because we have no sharpening on. If I go to, let's bump the subdivision up a little bit. And back to my thing here. I'm going to hit period. Just zoom in. And I'm going to weight these edges. I'm going to make sure my fong tag is up. Keep weighting these. Let's raise the subdivision a little bit more. And you can see that we could actually just sharpen this pretty much with a weight tag. We might need to uh, mess with the fong to sort some of this out. You can see the higher I raise the fong. It kind of gets rid of uh, some of the issues. Uh, but that is a very easy way of sharpening something. You can see we've got a few lumps and bumps here where we have some poles. Uh, but these could again be smoothed out. And I think once you get a texture on this that has a lot of surface detail, um, those kind of things will go away. Although we obviously have a few little problems here. And we could probably get that smoother using less topology, I think. Maybe we have a little bit too much going on in this area. But, you know, overall we're getting a good uh, result. So that's one way of sharpening that. Uh, the other way would just be to run a solid chamfer. And you'd be surprised just how effective that is so that's with one solid chamfer 
uh, one click and everything is sharpened. And this is because we have the edge flow going around all our transitional edges. Now we're going to have to clean up some bits. We might have to actually do some extra bevels. Uh, like we might have to bevel this edge. And we might have to bevel this edge. But I mean, apart from that, we could probably get rid of this creasing as well. Um, we obviously have a few lumps and bumps up here and we would need to correct this topology uh, with a few borrowed edge cuts. But apart from that, that's probably the only cleanup you'll have to do on this mesh. So you can obviously see the uh, benefits of retopology when it comes to getting a complex shape like this together and subdividing the object to get these smooth transitions. And that's the basic technique. Now, if you want to find out more about geometry and edge flow and all the kind of things that we've talked about, obviously go and check out Making It Look Great. Um, there's plenty of examples in this course that cover these topics. And, you know, you can build pretty much anything you want once you understand the fundamentals of the geometry. And obviously this was my uh, finished result that's a little bit smoother than our um, example there. Here you can see this uh, piece here that um, was slotted in. To this feature. And all of this stuff is built exactly the same way, you know, especially when it comes to the subdividing, you just get your edge flow right and give it one solid shampoo and it sharpens the whole thing for you. Uh, which is obviously a very speedy way of modelling. So I hope that's uh, given you a little bit of thought about how you might go about making these kind of complex shapes with subdivisions. In the meantime, though, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.